Hi everyone, I've had a lot of newcomers to my channel lately and if you are one of those new viewers then welcome and thank you for subscribing. I have noticed that a lot of these new viewers don't really understand how I go through my corset reviews. They're not sure um, what all the different parts of the corset are called and what they're used for. So in this video I'm backtracking a little bit. I'm going to give you more of a basic video on all the terminology and the anatomy of the different parts of the corset. So as an example, I'm going to be using this Electro Designs corset because it actually doesn't have a liner in it, so it shows all the different parts of the corset really well. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the corset, and the first term I'm going to explain is pattern. Now, a pattern is the individual pieces that show you what shape each panel of the fabric should be in order to give the corset its unique shape. So this is an example of what a pattern looks like before you actually cut the shapes out from fabric. So every corset is made from a specific pattern, and depending on what your measurements are, the pattern will also change. So this is an overbust corset pattern because this covers the bust. And you can see here that this corset is much shorter, so it's considered an underbust corset because it does not cover the breasts. Now, the panels of the corset are the pieces that make up this corset. The pattern that made this corset had eight panels originally, so the end product, this corset, has 16 panels, eight on each side. If you look closely here, you can see that each panel is very long and thin. So you can see here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The fashion layer, also called the shell layer or shell fabric, is the pretty outer fabric of a corset that's presented to the outside world. There's a lot of variety in fashion fabric, and you can say that the fashion fabric for this corset is a solid pink satin. If I open it up, you'll be able to see the strength layer. So here you can see the white coutil. Now, I prefer coutil as my strength layer, but some people might use twill or canvas for their strength layer. The purpose of the strength layer is to make sure that the corset is strong and does not stretch over time. Some corsets may have a lining inside, but this particular corset would be considered to not have a lining. So in the case of this corset here, the fashion fabric is this red satin, the lining fabric is this little mermaid cotton, and there's already a layer of coutil inside it sandwiched between the two other layers, still called the strength layer, but it can also be called the interlining because it's sandwiched between two other linings. Stitching on a corset is important because the stitching has to be strong enough to prevent the panels from ripping apart at the seams when the corset is tightened. In this particular corset, the seams are top stitched here. Other corsets might be flat felt or lock stitched. I have a separate video showing the differences between those different types of stitches. These little lines that you see running down here, these are bones. Corsets must have bones in order to keep it from wrinkling and to maintain its shape to some extent. The bones here used to be literally bones, especially baleen, which is basically the jaw or the teeth of a whale. Now bones are made primarily out of steel, like this flat steel boning here. I have another video showing you all the different types of bones that can be used for a corset. The bones are kept into what is called channels, which would keep the bone in place and prevent them from shifting around in the corset. The bones in this particular corset were sandwiched between two layers of fabric. However, not all boning channels have to be sandwiched. In this corset, the boning channels are external. And in this particular corset, you can see that the boning channels are internal. The waist tape is literally a piece of strong tape or ribbon that's placed at the waistline of the corset, and it's sewn almost like a belt. Since the waistline of a corset gives the most pressure and therefore takes the most stress, the waist tape reinforces this area and prevents the seam from ripping apart or the panels from stretching in this area. The waist tape might be exposed, like in this situation, or it might be hidden by the lining of a corset. The binding is what's usually placed at the top and bottom of a corset to cover the raw edges and give the corset a clean look. It can be machine finished or it can be hand finished. In this case, the binding was actually hand finished with an invisible hem stitch, so you don't see any stitching on the inside or the outside. This fastener on the center front is called the busk. Originally, a busk was just one long, stiff piece of wood in the front, and then they started making a split busk, which means that you can separate it on the front here. It's comprised of two spring steel bones. One side has knobs or pins, as you see here, 
and the other side has loops or hooks, as you can see here. This is most often placed at the center front of a corset, and it provides a way to easily get in and out of your corset without having to slide it over your head. The spring steel bones here also contribute to keeping your tummy flat. So you can see here that you can easily fasten it like so and unfasten it when you need to get out of your corset. Here is an example of what a busk might look like before you actually put it into the corset. So you can see the spring steel bones here and the hooks and the loops that are attached. When you put a busk into a corset, you cover the spring steel part with fabric, but you leave the knobs and the loops exposed. Here is another example of a busk. This one is called a spoon busk. You can see that it's more narrow at the top and it's more wide at the bottom. And if I turn it on its side here, on its profile shot, you can see that the bottom is curved. This is to go over your lower tummy and provide support to any person who has a little bit more tummy than others. So this does not create a flat front profile. This creates a curved front profile. This kind of looks like a spoon, hence its name. This pink flap that you see here is called the modesty panel. It might also be called a lacing protector. In the back, this is what covers your back when you have a gap in the laces, so you don't see your skin or your shirt beneath the corset. As you can see here, everything is the same color and it gives a more professional finish. This can also protect your body from getting friction burn when you're tightening the laces or prevent the laces from cutting into your flesh if you wear your corset very tight. It can be attached to one side of the corset or it can be suspended. In this case, the modesty panel is suspended within the laces. And in this example, the modesty panel is sewn onto one side. The front modesty panel, which I personally like to distinguish from the back one by calling this one a placket, is attached to the busk or beneath the busk. What it does is it prevents your skin from being pinched when you're fastening the corset, and also it prevents your skin or shirt from poking through when your corset is on. As you can see here, this has a flexible modesty placket in the front, but in this corset here you see that there is no modesty placket on the front. These little shiny rings here are called grommets. They're also sometimes called two-part eyelets. They have a top part, which you see here, and they also have a washer part, which protects the back side of the fabric. They're commonly made of metal, as you can see here, and most corsets will have these in the back of the corset. Sometimes, if you see a front lacing corset or a side lacing corset, the grommets will appear in other places. Grommets take the stress and the friction from the laces, and they prevent the laces from damaging the fabric when you tie up the corset. In this corset, the grommets are smaller, and they have a small lip around them, but they're also set into lacing bones, which are flat steel bones with holes drilled right into them. Whereas in this corset, you can see that the grommets are a different color. They're still made out of metal, though. The grommets are larger and have a wider lip around them, but they're not set into lacing bones. Rather, I have the grommet sandwiched between two normal flat steel bones. The laces here are what's threaded through the grommets in the back, and they adjust the corset size on the person's body. Over a long time, as the laces are pulled tighter, the gap in the back of the corset actually closes, and this forces the waist smaller. Laces have to be very strong to be able to withstand the stress of the corset on the person's body. They might be made out of double-faced satin ribbon, like this case, or the laces might be made out of cord or typical shoelace, like in this case. The laces can be threaded through the grommets in many different styles, depending on the corseter's preference. So this concludes the anatomy of a corset. I hope you found this video informative. If there's any part of the corset that I had forgotten to explain, or if there's any part of this video that you didn't understand, then please leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to clarify it for you. If you did like this video, then please click that button right over there, and I will see you all next time. Bye.